Hey, Dr. Nick Delgado here with Tyler LeBaron, and I know you're one of the good researchers. You've done some in-depth work about molecular hydrogen and its benefits. Tell me about some of the updates. I know you have uh, cutting-edge information at all times. <laughs> What's going on? Well, it has been very fascinating the past few months or so because I've had the opportunity to go to uh, China a lot to speak at a number of the conferences there and see some of the updates of what's going on. I recently learned that the Chinese government has actually given a couple million dollars in, for, in research grants to help advance the hygiene research. So now you have the, the Chinese military, the, the Chinese Navy, for example, um, are really doing a lot of research in hydrogen. So that's going on in China. There's about probably 20 or, or maybe a little bit more clinical trials for hydrogen therapy, but this time for hydrogen inhalation. So oh. we talked about hydrogen water before, mm -hmm. you just hydrogen, the water that contains a dissolved hydrogen gas, but inhalation is now coming to be a big thing as well. Um, I also was in uh, uh, Europe recently, which was a great time. There's some uh, other hydrogen colleagues there doing some research. Had the opportunity to go to the Max Planck Institute in Germany. Mm -hmm. and as you know, that's very, very prestigious, very famous. A lot of good researchers there. Um, one of the researchers there is doing some research on hydrogen gas and specifically the molecular mechanisms of how it's working. They're finding it has great anti-inflammatory properties, but very safe. So that's my experience there in Germany. I also had an opportunity to go to Poland. There's a good doctor there. He actually converted his home into a hyperbaric hydrogen house. Wow. So you go in and the, the very first part of the home is very small. Then you go into another chamber and it's a, it's a compression chamber. So I close the big steel doors, you know, crank them down tight, and they turn the pressure on, and my ears are just popping, you, you know, they just popping, popping, and you feel all the pressure. Once it gets equilibrized, then you can open the other door, and then you go into his home. He has his couches, he has his kitchen sink, everything there, about a, maybe a one, slightly higher 1% hydrogen gas concentration or so, so not flammable or anything, but that's what he's done. He lives in a hyperbaric hydrogen home. Wow. So the benefits of something like that to deal with oxidative stress and selective free radical damage, tell me about that. How does that translate into aging and probably uh, reducing the, the chronic conditions that we see in today's society? Well, with something like this hyperbaric hi hydrogen idea, and it's hyperbaric air, you know, the, the oxygen concentration, everything's hyperbaric. And really, we don't have a lot of studies on that. I mean, the first study with hyperbaric hydrogen therapy was in 1975 and published in Science by Texas A&M and Baylor University. But we need a lot more to understand, you know, is this really a, a, the most beneficial way or is it a beneficial way? What are the consequences of going hyperbaric like this? And they have used hydrogen gas in deep sea diving to prevent decompression sickness, and they've tested that in humans at, uh, at actually around 14 ATM, which is an enormous pressure. I mean, 14 times that normal atmospheric pressure at about 98.3% hydrogen gas, which, you know, in the rest of oxygen, which is about the same amount of moles of oxygen that would be available in our normal atmosphere, mm. but very high concentrations, no toxic effects there. So it'd be very interesting to see what types of therapeutic effects are being seen from this hyperbaric hydrogen therapy as opposed to conventional inhalation or the dissolving the gas in the water. But also in my, when I was in Europe, I had the opportunity to go to uh, uh, the Slovak Academy of Sciences. Hmm. And they're also doing some great research on, on hydrogen. One of the leading experts in like cardiovascular uh, radiation damage and, and, and different things, he has been doing some research on hydrogen for the past couple of years, but he hasn't published his results because he didn't believe that, th that it's possible to have such remarkable effects. Because hydrogen is so basically biologically inert. You wouldn't think it would actually be able to do these things, but he's seen it over and over again. Finally, with some, he sees that the research clear enough, also even MIR, miRNA levels and, and a number of different markers. He's preparing for an excellent publication that will be published here in the near future. And so they're doing excellent research there. Had an opportunity to reconnect with uh, uh, Dr. Fernand Domoki from Sezdeji University in Hungary. I met him at Kyoto University back in 2013 at a neurochemistry conference, mm -hmm. and he's continued doing his research on hydrogen. He actually uses, for his animal models, most people use you know rodents, animals, rats. He actually uses newborn pigs, hmm. which is an excellent model because it's a bigger mammal. It's a lot closer to human physiology in terms of if it's going to be benefit the pig, then it should be able to benefit humans. And actually, his last article he published, I think, was in 2012. I asked him, well, if you've been doing research on hydrogen, where, where are the publications at? And he said that he has been doing more research. He's been able to improve his methodology uh, at doing the research because before he could only do a, a asphyxiation or, or no oxygen to the brain of the, of the neonate, 
-hmm. for, I think he said, eight minutes. And that's not enough damage to the brain to see the truly remarkable effects of hydrogen. But his, his new uh, methods have been able to cause a, a greater degree of asphyxiation that's more damage to the brain and thus show a greater benefit of the hydrogen gas. And when, he's done, when he started seeing those results, they were also quite unbelievable. And so he, he did a whole bunch of studies over and over and over again. All the students stay in the, stay in the lab, you know, I mean, 24 hours a day, because you have to be there constantly, because it takes 48 hours just to do one study. And, but now he's seeing, yeah, the hygiene really is rescuing the damage, the pathological damage done to the brain um, just by this, this, this inhalation, this simple, effective method. And they're comparing it to hypothermia and some other conventional methods, and they're, they're finding some phenomenal results. So I'm very excited for that new publication to come out from them. So from a perspective of use, uh, how long would a session typically last to gain some benefit? And would you ever entertain doing it a few more times during the day? What's the frequency? Yeah, because the hygiene research is still so much in its infancy, it's very difficult to say these are the, the correct doses, this is you know, the correct concentration, and all these different mm -hmm. things. But what is being done right now, and like I said, we're, we're, they're doing some great clinical trials in, in, in China. Um, I mentioned last time that they've already collected over 20,000 patients worth of data in, in, in figuring out the various protocols and things. So what's being recommended, what's being done right now has been shown to be fairly effective is an inhalation session of maybe 30 to 60 minutes at a time, maybe okay. even slightly longer, and then one to three times a day. Hmm. And there's actually an inhalation machine here at the show. I just I, I just found. Actually, I know the company from Japan. I'm good friends with friends with the, with with the, the researchers there. They're they're a research company actually, and they developed this product. But so now we have another way. You have you have hydrogen producing tablets. You have the other method of hydrogen water. You have uh, now you have this inhalation machine. It's hydrogen is becoming very common as it is already in Asia. Wow. So this type of technology and, and therapy, it's affordable, it's effective, and it's something that uh, every person can benefit. Can a, a young person use it as well as a senior? Uh, what is the, the, the category of use? Yeah, no, excellent question. And, but because we're seeing that hydrogen does have such a high safety profile, in fact, every time we eat our, our, our non digestible carbohydrates and you know, our fibers, right, our intestinal bacteria is producing this hydrogen gas. So we always have basal levels of hydrogen gas in our blood and in our breath all the time. And so the safety profile is very high. Mm -hmm. So, and again, going back to this, the study from Sedgwick University, I mean, they're also using the, 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 the newborns, for example. I mean, a lot of these done in, in, in infants or in neonates or, you know, still still in, in the babies in the, in, the, in the womb, if you will, right? Right. Right. And showing great, great benefits, both to the mother and to, and to the child. So it appears the safety and the therapeutic potential is very high. So this is why, for me, I'm personally very excited and passionate about this area because it's not common that you come across some supplement or some idea or some method that is, is not only very effective, but also very safe. The only thing in my, in my mind that comes close to this is the, the, the best medical prescription of exercise. Fantastic. And that brings me up. So athletic performance, um, are you experiencing and noticing and observing uh, in yourself and other clients or athletes uh, changes in their performance? Yeah, that is, that's becoming more and more profound. See, it's been very interesting, this idea, because hygiene has been considered to be an, an antioxidant, but scientifically, not so much. It's not a conventional antioxidant. And I make this point because conventional antioxidants have been shown in other research to actually hamper or impair exercise performance. Maybe it's because it's indiscriminately scavenging important free radicals and different things that we need to induce mitochondrial biogenesis. But hydrogen gas does not do that. And uh, I was visiting with uh, uh, Dr. Shiego Ota. I spoke at a conference at the International Hydrogen Symposium in Korea um, uh, just a couple weeks ago in, in, in November. And we were talking about the benefits of hydrogen for exercise and, and athletes. And what he's been doing in his lab, he's preparing for a publication on this also, is actually showing that the hydrogen uh, can increase the athletic performance for VO2 max, actually increase their ability to use oxygen. And they're, I forget the numbers they're finding, but, but and I know another group out of Texas, um, they're finding the same, same thing, the hydrogen improve, improving the VO2 max. Tremendous. Well, the next level then is to look at this aging process. Is it theoretically possible that using the hydrogen water, the hydrogen water producer, the hydrogen gas, that theoretically as we age we can maybe slow or reverse or reduce the effects of aging? Yeah, well, it, it would not be surprising if that were the case. If we look at the animal studies, 
uh, I wouldn't say the hydrogen is going to necessarily increase the lifespan, but if there's like a, an, a toxin or something that's caused the animals to you know, die, of course hydrogen can help ameliorate a lot of those, those, those problems and improve the quality of life, which is a, that's really what anti-aging is, improving the quality of life. But, but potentially increasing the, the lifespan. And if we look at some of the studies done in, in animal and cell studies, some of your major anti-aging markers are things like the NAD plus, NADH ratio, which hydrogen can improve that ratio. And also expressions like of a CERT1 protein, for example, hydrogen can actually increase this, this anti-aging uh, marker. And there's a number of other markers that yes, hydrogen is increasing. So. I wouldn't be surprised if, we're, if as we do more research and more uh, molecular mechanists you know, get involved into the research, we're starting to see what hydrogen can and cannot do. But we're still in its infancy right now. Wow. Okay, so in using uh, hydrogen, I've been using the hydrogen drops, hydrogen tablets, hydrogen water. Uh, I'm going to jump up and start using the hydrogen gas. I think that's uh, important. I'm not sure I can get my whole house to shut down and become a hydrogen, hydrogen. house. <laughs> that's that's a little much, but it has to happen. I think I'll probably be able to get enough from those uh, combined therapies that I mentioned. Is that possible? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you're do, doing a hydrogen inhalation. Yeah. That That's going to, there's a different route of administration. The pharmacokinetics mm -hmm. are different. And like I always say, pharmacokinetics dictate pharmacodynamics. And so, the inhalation is going to be able to do some things that maybe the water won't and then vice versa. So being a, taking both of those combinations I think is an excellent way to get all the benefits that hygiene has to offer, at least, at least for you. Sounds great. This is Dr. Nick Delgado and Tyler LeBaron. We're here to share with you the latest on breakthroughs in health and anti-aging. See nickdelgado.com and if you like the interview, share it with your friends and uh, put a like on the video. Take care.